Good day sir, this is Siminti Gerald Gerald from Group 5 and now we're going to present and discuss to you what is the radar errors, radar ARPA performance standard and how radar is set up for operation. The course outcome is students will be knowledgeable about the radar errors, a radar ARPA performance standard and how to set up for operation. The learning outcome is it will give us an idea on how many and what are the types of errors in radar and it also shows here the performance standard of radar ARPA and it will give us an idea on how to set up the radar for operation. The importance of this topic is we are going to, uh, to know how to set up the radar for operation and we are going to learn and enumerate the errors in radar. So first, I'm going to discuss the radar errors. So first, we have the heading marker alignment. In north top orientation, the heading market is aligned with the graduation on bearing, scale that corresponds with the standing use value of the ship's heading relative to true north. It means that 0, 0, 0 degree on the bearing scale aligns with the true north. Next, next is the ABL, ABL not alignment. So our electric beam lithography not aligned and it caused error to the radar. The next is the gyro input error. This error are modeled in the measured angular rate of the gyrus and can be estimated by using other sensors such as the global positioning system or GPS. The improper tuning of the radar also caused error. Improper range also caused error in the radar. Next is blind sectors. Blind sectors areas that cannot be scanned by the radar of the vessel because they are shielded by elements of its superstructures, mast, etc. So next we have the adjustment rain clutter. The raindrops absorb and scatter radar signals, so less energy reaches the target and even less returns to the radar as an echo. So next is the own vessel date input error. In putting wrong date in a vessel, will cost error. Next is the range and bearing discrimination. The range discrimination, two small targets on the same bearing and a slight range difference may be shown as on target. The bearing discrimination is two small targets on same range and slight bearing difference may be shown as one target. So next is the beam with distortion. Beam with, this, the beam with distortion, detection and deflect, deflectometry measurements of giga, gigahertz surface of a stick waves. So next is the uh, slide lobe echo. Slide lobe artifacts occur where slide, slide lobes reflect sound from a strong reflector that is outside of the central beam and where the echoes are displayed as they originated from within the central beam. Next, the multiple echoes. The successive reflection of a sound wave from a number of obstacles caused us to hear echo of the sound transmitted one after other. The second trace echoes. Second trace echoes are echoes received from contact at an actual range greater than the radar range setting. One of the limitations of ship radar is that it may not be able to detect an object due to its size, proximity to sea surface or when the object is poor radar target because of its constructions or design. For example, Military ships are designed so that the radar waves 
do not reflect back to the receiving unit of radar scanner due. Uh, this also happens with wooden fishing boats, boats as they have poor radar reflective surface. Small units boats engaged in fishing are also difficult to sight visually at night. Sometimes they may not be seen during daytime from the bridge due to height due to height or the angle of viewing of reflective of the sea surface. When navigating in the proximity of such vessel or their known operating areas, it is good practice to post an alert look up with the walkie talkie on the forecastle deck. As what I have said earlier, the picture shows that the target the target size is so small and it may not be able to detect the object due to its size and it caused the poor radar target and it, it, it caused error to our radar so that's all thank you good evening sir this is Cadet Torrentino one of the member of group 5 so my report is the first is in the following picture seaweed is giving very good radar returns due to the highly reflective surface and it it had trouble with the whole sea surface during low water but because it was a ship's first first call to a port area which was not well surveyed my first thought was that maybe an error in the charts and we altered course to stay with clear we started approaching only after getting positive confirmation by by all positive means that it was safe to do so and there was uh, ample water with sufficient depth so the next is it is always better to be unsafe than sorry it was also considered if the seaweed because of being so densely packed would in the aid would could in any way fall to the bow thruster so the another is this is the peak of the radar and this is your ship and just by glancing at the radar pic picture would appear that the vessel is very close to the shoreline uh, it means a uh, rear are uh, uh, very close to the shoreline and they have a target so next proceed to the next so this is the radar arpa performance standard yeah, there is uh, the first is the size of the ship and the other column is 500 GRT the other is 500 GRT to 10,000 GRT and each is easy and the last is all ship scrap and the inside of the radar performance standard or the radar arpa is minimum operational display or area diameter the minimum display area auto acquisition of target minimum acquired radar target capacity minimum activated EIS target capacity minimum sleeping ace capacity and the last is trial maneuver uh, all, all of this is here inside the, the performance of the radar ARPA so this is the last uh, for this table is the requirement contained in this table should be as is specified for X-band and expand equipment so in the table is they have a target description target target feature and detection range in nautical mile so inside the table is they have a shorelines and they have a rising to here picture is rising to 60 and for x band is 20 and for x band is 20 the other shoreline is rising to 6 for x band is 8 for x band is 8 and the last shoreline line is the rising to 3 for X band 11 for X band is 11 so on the solar ships they have 5000 GRT they have to 10 for X, X band is 11 for X band is in 11 nautical miles so the small vessel with radar reflector with meeting AMO performance standard is 4.0 to her future and for her X band is 5.0 and for her X band is 3.7. The navigation boy with corner repeater is 3.5 to target feature. For 
detection range of the calmyl for X band is 4.9 and the last is 3.6 the, the tropical navigation boy they have 3.5 for their target picture for, her, for X band is 4.6 and for X band is 3.0 and the last is the small vessel the link with 10 M with no radar picture uh, the result of this target feature is 2.0 and the her for her X band is 3.4 and for X band is 3.0 uh, it means all the all the requirement in this table is here for X band and is for X band and S band equipment thank you so good morning everyone I am Dick Cadet Edilberto C. Galloy and I am here now to discuss uh, how radar is set up for operation and the general procedures to which to switch on a radar number one is uh, visual visually make sure that the scanner is clear number two set the four critical adjustment control the gain brilliance anti clutter anti rain clutter to off or minimum number three set the main function switch which is the off standby and transmit to standby the radar, the radar set will then begin to warm up certain parts will require time to warming for warming up number four set range selector switch to desired range scale number five set pl sec selector which to desire position in some radar sets main function switch is mark is mark off standby short long pulse whereby a radar observer has to choose the pl automatically every time to switch on the set in such a case Omit this step, it is covered by step 9. Number 6. Ensure that EBL, ERBL, VRM, and range rings are all off by turning down their respective brightness color. Number 7. Set the presentation mode switch to the RM established mode. Number 8. Adjust panel lights to the desired intensity. Number 9. When the set has warmed up, set the main function which to transmit. In some sets, instead of transmit, the main function switch is marked short pulse, pulse, long pulse so that PL has to be selected at the same time as switching on from standby set step 5 in such a case. In such a case, set main function switch to short pulse. Number 10. Generally increase the brilliance until the rotating trace become visible. Then gradually decrease the brilliance until the rotating trace just disappear. The brilliance has now been set correctly and it should not normally require adjustment. If and when the three other critical adjustment control which is the gain anti-clutter differentiator or the anti-rain clutter are all off or at minimum number 11 at brilliance control is provided separately for the beading marker turn it down a necessary brightness is of the heading marker will causes a heading marker to be broader than necessary distract the observer attention from tar targets when the picture is obtained later, number the control will not uh, will not and must blank out the heading marker completely. However, how control may be set. Number twelve. Ensure that the electronic center coincides co coincides with the geometric center of the display. This can be done by switching on the range rings and verifying that the outermost ring is completely visible and coincides with the circumference of the PPI. If not centered properly, part of the range rings would not be visible. If necessary, 
Center the picture by rotating the center shift as required. Number 13. Check that the heading marker is properly aligned. When gyro is stab stabilized, it should indicate the correct gyro course. When the unstabilized, it should when in unstabilized, it should coincide with the zero of the bearing scale. If not again, if not again as it as it as per manufacturer's instructions, usually a spring-loaded knob is to be pulled out or pushed in, rotated as necessary, and then released. Number 14, gradually increase to gain until the receiver noise is visible as pickled background. The settings of the gain would have to be reduced when using when sewing short range scales. Number 15, the efficiency of the set as described later in this chapter. And the last one is number 16, which is adjust other control as necessary. So that's all. Thank you. Good day. My name is Lord Chikpid Urbanzos and I am from group 5. And I will discuss the continuation of how radar is set up for operation. Number 16, adjust the controls as necessary. Radar resolution. There are two important factors in radar resolution. Range resolution and bearing resolution. Bearing resolution is the ability of the radar to display a separate pips the echoes receive from two targets which are at the same range and close together. It is proportional to the antenna length and reciprocally proportional to the wavelength, the length of the antenna radiator should be chosen from a bearing resolution better than 2.5. This condition is normally satisfied with a radiation of 1.2 meters or 4 feet or longer in the X brand. The S brand radar requires a radiator of about 12 feet or 3.6 meters or longer. Bearing accuracy. One of the most important features of the radar is how accurately the bearing of a target can be measured. The accuracy of bearing measurement basically depends on the narrowness of the radar beam. However, the bearing is usually taken relative relative to the ship's heading and thus proper adjustment of the heading line at installation is an important factor in ensuring bearing accuracy. To minimize error when measuring the bearing of a target, put the target echo at the extreme position on the screen by selecting a suitable range. Range measurement. Measurement of the range to a target is also a very important function of the radar. Generally, there are two means of measuring range, the fixed range rings and the variable range maker or VRM. The mixed range rings appear on the screen with a predetermined interval and provide rough estimate of the range to a target. The variable range markers, the diameter is increased or decreased so that the marker touches the inner edge of the target, allowing the operator to obtain more accurate range measurements. That's all.